everyone, it is time to discuss my experience at the Arnold. So first, if you do not know who won the Arnold Classic Strongman competition and you don't want to know until you watch it, do not watch this video because I'm going to talk about it because that is the main reason that I went to the Arnold. So go ahead and shut it off. Now, if you're sticking around, I've got a lot of stuff to say, so I'm going to be rambling a lot, but I want to go out there and kind of talk about, you know, what the experience was, some pros and cons that we ran into, what we did, what we saw, what was exciting, my feelings, etc. So Friday kind of sucked because I went to the doctor. My doctor did my blood work, and he's like, hey, you got to come in here. So I figured, you know, all right, we'll do that on the way. <laughs> took I wasn't in there till an hour after my appointment so we were like flying all the way to Ohio to make the first two events and we got there just as they were getting ready to announce all of the competitors and they walked out with the flags really cool and um, day one when we got there it wasn't super packed except for the strongman stage and we were pretty far back so I <laughs> I'm going to mention this a couple times probably, but I was thinking that the Rogue live stream might not cover everything and it wouldn't be available out there, but it is. So if you really want to see all that stuff, I'm not going to put all that footage. I actually have every single thing that was done at the Strongman Classic. Like I recorded everything. And then I'm like, wait, Rogue's got all this out there on YouTube, and it's way better quality. <laughs> I'm not going to upload that, because it'll take forever to edit. So I'm going to put a couple of things in there, highlights. But I was sitting there in the back of this crowd, right? And I'm holding up my arm. And the first event uh, probably took 40 minutes or so holding up in one arm and I'm like trying to pass the left. I gave it to Glenn. He could do it for two minutes and he's like, whoa, <laughs> gave it back to me. So I was standing there with one arm outstretched, right? Cramps going all the way in the front delt and my back and everything. And then it, <laughs> it was just, it was a waste of time, but I got like four hours of footage. And uh, it was just fun, though, and to just kind of be in the crowd and everything, hear everybody excited. And on the first day, so again, we didn't get to walk around any booths or anything like that. We went straight in to this. They did the wait over bar where they threw a bag over the bar. It was kind of cool to watch, but it was kind of confusing because we couldn't tell how much they were doing on the wait. But the second event, this is where things got really cool. They had a natural stone, so just a stone sitting out somewhere. They had brought this one in from California, and you got points if you got it off the ground. So you let air underneath the rock, you got one point. In your lap, two points. Up to your chest, three points. On your shoulder with two hands was four points. And if you take a hand off, that's five points. If you got five points, however much you lifted it the second time, you got that many more points. They added it. And if you got all the way up, that's five, so you could keep going. Well, the guy that went third or fourth, and uh, of course, I forgot his name. I'll just put it in the video when you see this. He lifted it four times. I've never seen anything like it. It was amazing, and everybody's just going wild. However, what made this even cooler in retrospect is then half floor went, which everybody thought was going to rock this. And he got one, and he really struggled trying to get a second one. And he took third, right? And then Brian Shaw went, and he couldn't even get it to his shoulder. So the guy that did it four times was the youngest competitor there. And he's also, he wasn't the lightest, but he was one of the lightest people. And that just made it so much more impressive in retrospect. But then after that, everybody's dispersing. Glenn and I are like, hey, let's go check out some booths. So, warning, they closed the Expo Center early, which we did not know about. <laughs> we went out. I got some goodies. Uh, so, I bought myself a slingshot that fits without having to pay for shipping because they had a booth there. I did not get to meet Mark Bell, but I talked to Smokey 
Um, just <laughs> him selling me stuff, basically. And I got some elbow sleeves. I wanted to try these out. Unfortunately, they only had the camo left in my size uh, because of my fat seps. So I didn't get the black, but whatever. I'm excited to try those out. I probably won't use them this weekend at the competition because I'm going to use the old ones that I've actually broken in a little bit and I'm comfortable with because I at least trained once or twice. So those will be used around the gym, and I'll test them back and forth to see which one I like better, let you guys know. But then security said, hey, you guys got to head to our next ax exit. Exit. Oh, there was axe throwing. I didn't get to do it because there was a huge long line. But that's probably why I've said that. I was thinking about it, right? Uh, so anyways, we went back to the hotel, which we were about 20 minutes away. And we're like, man, what are we going to do? And so we considered going to the fitness room. But as we were driving back, I realized our hotel's here. There's a movie theater right here. What does that mean? We went and saw a movie. We had Chipotle. Chipotle? Can't talk today. And then we went and saw a movie. We saw Annihilation. Now, I did not quite know what to expect from this movie. Uh, it was interesting. But I will tell you without spoiling anything that towards uh, like the back three quarters of it, there were some things that were the stuff of nightmares. Oh my goodness, that stuff was creepy. Like just thinking about it, it's like, oh man, I'm not into the horror movies and stuff. It wasn't quite like a horror movie, but oh my god, this is nightmares. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and like the music, ah. Oh. So if you've seen Stranger Things, they use that type of music to some stuff that's way freakier than what's in Stranger Things. And I'm just like, whoa. <sighs> so then we went to bed. Um, Glenn refused to cuddle with me, which was unfortunate. And then he was decided to be a jerk. I like having a bunch of pillows. Uh, I need pillows between my knees because of my back and my hip. And now ever since I've had shoulder surgery, I need to like basically sleep with something in between my arms. And he's like... I'm not going to use all these pillows. I'm like, dude, give me some. No. I woke up. He had taken two pillows and threw them on the other side of the bed so I couldn't use them. He's lucky I didn't find out that night because I was pretty grumpy. He might not have made it through the Arnold. Uh, but Saturday, so uh, we went out bright and early. Got to see Highland Games stuff. Uh, and... That was awesome. Now, there were some Ninja Warrior stuff going on that I guess people could go do. People were standing in line for that for like an hour. We're sitting down. It's one of the few times we got to sit down and watching the Highland Games. And there's this guy there. I, I linked or I uploaded one of the videos with him, Spencer Tyler. We watched this guy set three world records in a row. <laughs> three. And then we went over to the adaptive athletes. Um, and that's one of the biggest things that it, it really sucks about the Arnold. There's so much stuff going on. You can't do it all. So you have to like choose what you want to see and you sacrifice something. So we left. He set another world record as we left uh, to go to the ad adaptive strongman. Like I, even if you could be at five places at the same time, it wouldn't be enough. But the adaptive strongman, man, that stuff was impressive. Okay, I'm gonna share some of this stuff. And hopefully you guys will think it's as amazing as, as I think it is. So I know sometimes I have the tendency to complain, oh, you know, my shoulder and my back. And These guys are dealing with nerve issues, arms missing, legs missing, or a leg missing. Um, some of them had uh, mental issues. I'm not quite sure exactly what things they had. And they're out there doing strong man. They're doing stuff that I struggle to do with a completely full body. Just no excuses. It's just so inspiring. And that was just awesome to watch. Now what made this experience on Saturday even cooler, and I'm still kind of geeking out about it, is I'm sitting there like trying to record and having Glenn record. And he's like, why do I have to record? My arm's sore. I recorded for like three hours yesterday. Right here to the right of me is Brian Alzru. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, Brian, where's your mask? Because he's not supposed to be out by people, and he's definitely not supposed to be out without a mask. And he didn't have either one on. And so he starts talking to me and shake hands and stuff. 
And then, like, you know, we go back to, like, watching. He's recording a couple of the adaptive athletes he has there. But he's just, like, talking to me. And we're talking about Strongman, and he's talking about, like, you know, he was talking to Brian Shaw about yesterday's performance, and he's got a plan and all this stuff. And he's talking about it. That was just so cool. And then Glenn's like, dude, you know him? And I'm like, no, I just watch his YouTube. He's a really cool guy. And he's, he's like, that is just so cool. And it was cool. Like, we were just talking to Strongman, talking shop. And uh, this is where, for the first time, I regret. I didn't have my shirt on, okay? This is Suffer Beautifully. Um, if you haven't watched this video, just, just Google Suffer Beautifully. Um, it, it's a video that he made going over, like, some of the adaptive athletes at his gym. So uh, a couple of adaptive athletes from his gym were at the Arnold. One of them, unfortunately, got injured. And it's just a beautiful video. And uh, I'll be honest... I've watched it like five times, every single time, choked up. But it's just, it's so inspiring. Like, just putting it in perspective, you have no excuse, go do it. And <laughs> Glenn's over here, he's wearing all of his Michigan Strongest Man shirts, right? Every competition shirt, he's wearing those. I'm freaking wearing a Cookie Monster shirt that says munchies on it. Like, that's why I'm fat. Yeah, and uh, like the first day, I'm walking around. It's like superheroes everywhere, right? Like, it, some of these people look comical. Like, they're just huge. Like, at a certain point, like, guys just don't have any sleeves on. And I'm like, man, I am the only out-of-shape fat person here. And uh, it took about two hours, but then I found somebody that made me feel like, okay, at least there's two of us in this convention center. <sighs> but getting back into it, so we left from that into day two of the Arnold Strongman Classic. And we watched, they had the timber carry, which was crazy impressive. And I really thought it was cool to see the guys bringing the apparatus back. Normally they don't show that. And they had five guys to carry this thing back. So that was pretty cool to watch. And then they did a deadlift. Now, if you have not seen the deadlift footage, I'm gonna put um, two clips of deadlifts in here. But there were four guys, four guys that pulled over 1,000 pounds on a deadlift with no gear other than straps. Okay, so suits were not allowed, so they had belt straps, some of them had knee sleeves. Four guys, over 1,000. It was just crazy. Like, that was just so awesome. And the energy just kept building. Like, every, every successful attempt, the energy, everybody's just going crazier, crazier. Then, unfortunately, uh, Jerry Pritchett, he tore his bicep. Like, I, w I was watching him, like, he's taping up his bicep. Like, Man, he got hurt. That sucks. So he kind of, at this point, we knew he was not going to be able to break his own world record on the elephant bar. So Eddie Hall holds the world record deadlift where you can use a suit and everything else. This is the world record on the elephant bar, which is a different type of bar. And uh, when Eddie Hall did an interview, I forget which year it was, but he actually set a elephant bar deadlift record. He said that he felt that was harder than a regular bar. So that's kind of putting things into perspective a little bit. It looks like it might be easier, but he said it was harder, and a lot of these guys say it's harder. Um, but Half Thor went out there and attempted a world record. And spoiler, he got the world record! Oh, and you know, and I'm not a huge Half Thor fan just because of some of his attitude that he's had, but I have to give him credit. He made that look easy, and I was cheering. I'm like, woo, woo, <laughs> trying not to clap. Like, I'm holding my camera, so I'm like clapping here, probably shaking a little bit, but yeah, it was cool to see. Unfortunately, Brian Shaw attempted a world record immediately after that to try and beat him couldn't pull it and I'm pretty sure that his hamstring tear from World Strongest Man last year still bothering him. So hopefully he can patch that up for World Strongest Man. But that was cool and then we were faced with well we've got three hours before the final start do we want to go around to these booths and deal with all these people wall-to-wall -wall people people are bumping into you you cannot walk more than a step without waiting or go eat and we chose to eat and it took us like 20 minutes just to leave the expo center now these booths 
we're set up. Let me see. Um, so I still got my booklet. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up. Um, so here, you can see that right there. That's the main stage. And so we came in back here, right? The doors are all along the side. That's where they were doing the strongman show. These are some other, other rooms. It's in here backwards. Um, so this down here is where they had the ultimate team challenge and the Highland games. And then over here on this side, they had the strongman cage. So they did, you know, the adaptive athletes there and a bunch of other stuff. Everything else that you see here is all vendors, right? This is all vendors. So I thought it was going to be a bunch of people like being like, hey, try my product. Here's my protein. Here's my pre-workout and everything else like that. That's not how it worked. They had samples and stuff, but you had to stand in line to get them. And people were standing in these lines for half an hour or more to type in their email address and try a sample. And I'm like, who's got time for that? There's so much stuff going on. So much cool stuff. Why would you want to do that? And then people were waiting in line to take pictures with some people. Uh, I, I didn't get to actually see Brian Shaw. Apparently the only time that he was out there that I could have seen him would have been on Sunday. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so... Glenn and I were like, do you want to stay in line for samples and stuff? Nah, let's, let's go eat. So we walked down and um, I can't remember the name of this place. And Glenn obviously is not here because he thought playing D&D &D was more important than making this video. Which, he's probably right. Um, I think it was the Melt. But anyways, we just walked down for a while. We just kept passing all these places and nothing sounded good. And I'm like, I want a sandwich. And I found this place. It had the picture of skull and crossbones, but where the skull would be was a sandwich. I'm like, we're eating there. That looks awesome. And it was awesome. It was great food. And we got a shake on the way back. But this is where kind of the day, I was kind of disappointed with this. So we paid ahead of time for the ex going into the expo. You had to get a wristband and stuff. And it was 20 bucks a day. And it was more than that if you didn't buy them ahead. But if you wanted to see the finals, you had to buy these tickets. And we were all the way in the back as far as you could go. If you wanted to sit down on the main floor, it was $100. If you wanted to sit where we were sitting, it was $50. So there's the receipt, look at that. We had to pay $100 to go see who won, which, mm, it was worth it. But uh, so, be prepared if you ever want to go to the Arnold that you will have to pay extra to go see the finals. And if you're only there for strongman, like based on cheering, most of the people there were for it. They make you sit through pro bodybuilding, bikini contest, and physique, and a show before the strongman gets started. I'm like, oh my goodness. So talking about this, because I've never experienced it before, uh, pro bodybuilding. So they brought everybody out and introduced them. You know, a bunch of guys in Speedos and huge and with the fake tans. And then they each got to do a posing routine to music. And most of it was pretty silly. Like, it would be, normally they use the dramatic music. So it was like, oh, bicep pose. I don't have a bicep. Pretend there's a bicep there, right? And then, oh, and then bicep, and then they do you know music again. And here's my back, right? But here's this guy. I'm gonna mention it. If you want to Google it, go Google it. Uh, I I just say I thought it was cool. Fred Smalls. So I think you can Google it. Uh, Fred Smalls posing routine Arnold 2018, and you should be able to find it. This guy goes out there. And he is getting down to some music. Like, it starts a little bit slower, and then it picks up speed. Just watch the whole thing uh, if you want to give bodybuilding a chance. So cool. <laughs> like, I, I can't dance, but he's, like, dancing and, like, peck popping and flexing to the music. It was entertaining. Like, Glenn was like, dude, that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, he was kind of the only guy that really went all out like that. So if all of bodybuilding was like that, I might actually be able to get into at least watching it. I'm not going to do it, but it was pretty entertaining to see some dude be able to, to flex to music. 
Uh, it's kind of like The Rock, you know, Peck Pockman. You know, it's entertaining to watch if, if it's done right. Uh, but then they do the pose down where they like getting guys and they're like, this, these people go and these people switch and do a double biceps and all this stuff. Two hours that took. At this point, I'm getting irritated. Like, what is going on? Ah, <laughs> uh, bikini contest. <laughs> Keep. Okay, so I know I know nothing about bikini contests. I I still have no idea what they were judging. Like, is it just they're pretty? I I don't know. But I want to describe this because it was funny to me. So they walk out on stage like one at a time, and they're walking weird. Now my my theory is, you know, there's obviously a lot of emphasis on on the the booty, right? I think they were trying to not flex their glutes when they walked, so it looked fuller and it, like you didn't get the the knit. But I'm not sure. Like they were just like swaying their hips. They were just walking crazy. But anyway, so they all get out there, and then they call them to the stage. And so I'm expecting like you know double bicep and you know just like they did the bodybuilding. They go, ladies, turn around towards the back wall, walk five steps, and hold it. So they walk backwards, you know, to, away from us, and the cameras are zooming in, you know, we're way back there. And uh, then they, like, stick out their butts and hold it until the judge says, okay, now turn around and walk back. And that was it. And then they're like, thanks, ladies. And I'm like, what just happened? They made them walk away from the camera, stick out their butts, walk back, and that was it. And it was done. <laughs> what? So I still don't know, like, was, was it how big their butts were? Was it looks? Was it physique? Was it, I don't know. Then men's physique was very similar to that crossbred with bodybuilding, minus the sticking out the butts. It was like sticking out the chest, making the waist really small instead. Then there was a speech, a lifetime uh, achievement award. Which was cool, like, you know, they did this whole thing, like, what this guy did and everything. And, like, he deserved the reward. But, about five minutes into his speech, this dude just starts saying all these inspirational quotes. And I look at Glenn after about ten of them. I'm like, I think this guy just went on Google and typed in inspirational quotes. And he's just reading them. Glenn's like, nah. I started finishing the quotes. And Glenn's like, whoa, he is doing that. <laughs> Like, he went out for three pages. I was <laughs> just like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, just stop. Uh. Then we watched a cool acrobat show where uh, there was two brothers. The one brother jumped on the other brother's head and then went head to head, no hands, up and down stairs. Really cool. Like, just really impressive. But I was like, strong man, let's go. As you can tell, I'm still not excited about having to spend $50 and wait that long. But finally came out. There was the axle overhead. Unfortunately, a couple of people at this point just had nothing left or were injured. I'm still not sure who all had injuries at this point. I know Pritchett tore his bicep. Um, Shaw came out there. He did a pretty awesome job. But at this point, like, Half Thor only needed to do one and a half reps. Now, this is where I will give all sorts of props to Half Thor, even though I'm like, no, dude, no, don't do it. It's not worth it. He did two reps, so that was more than he needed. And then he looks at the crowd, he goes like this, everybody cheers. So he does a third one, and his clean looks kind of bad. So I'm hoping he's going to stop, because he's got worlds coming up. It's not worth the injury. But no, Half Thor is all about pleasing the crowd, right? So he goes one more and he's like, yeah. So he does it again and then he throws it at the top. Poor Magnus. Magnus got out of that chair so fast. He's like, woo! <laughs> Just out of there. So congratulations to Half Thor on his first uh, Arnold win. And he's looking really strong. Looks like he's going to have a good time in Worlds. Um, Shaw still got that hamstring injury. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. But one really cool moment that happened right after Half Thor won. Brian Shaw walked out from the side, went to like shake his hand, and then they ended up embracing and they hugged, right? 
wow that like to me it was emotional not like sad but like wow i don't know if, if i could put that much training and everything and like that's my living like shaw's i mean that's what he does and he just lost this guy and he walks out there and gives the guy a hug like that is true sportsmanship and, and that just says so much about the character and that was really cool to see then we had to go back to the hotel now i haven't talked a whole lot about traffic but the traffic in this place was a nightmare i hate city driving all the one ways and stuff but you know getting home late i was super grumpy at glenn because glenn was not helping with navigation i was tired and grumpy my back was sore from standing up almost the entire day <laughs> and he told me to turn we ended up in the wrong freaking hotel <sighs> yeah so Sunday, we had this idea that Sunday there were going to be less people. Nope. I think there might have been more people on Sunday than there were Saturday and Friday. Because when we went to get off the expressway coming from the hotel, they closed the off-ramp. So we had to go around and my, my lady in the phone's like, you know, do a U-turn. Turn right here. Turn right here. I'm like, these roads are all closed. There's cops everywhere directing traffic. And every day we end up having to park in a different parking structure. Parking, uh, you can see they upped the price. They had a sticker sticking over it. It was $20, but that was for the whole day. So that was kind of nice that it was for the whole day. You didn't have to pay by hour. But <laughs> we just drove around and around and... Oh, it took us forever. So we ended up going to the Adaptive Strongman competition, which is what we're going to see on Sunday, a little bit late. Uh, but just, man, again, these guys are just so impressive, the stuff that they were doing, and just huge motivational. Unfortunately, on Sunday, we wanted to watch the whole thing. We watched two more events, so we'd watch three of the five, and I'm just beat at this point. And I'm looking at it going, okay, this is going to end at four, we're going to have to fight everybody out of here, deal with traffic. So we won't even get out of the city until 5. And then it's a little bit over a four-hour drive. I say we go now. So we went. Glenn got his shirt, the uh, Stop Whining shirt, uh, which I told him he should have bought for me to wear when he's lifting so he can see the Stop Whining and be reminded. It's true. That's what should have happened. Uh, but we left. Again, just awesome time. Uh, I, I really like it. Be prepared if you go. Again, you're going to have to spend extra money. If you want free stuff, you're going to have to stand in line. If you want pictures with people, you're going to have to stand in line. You're going to have to pay at least 20 bucks for parking. You're going to have to pay extra if you want to see the finals. And traffic is just a nightmare. And if you're claustrophobic at all, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time. Wall to wall people. No joke. But just for kind of an idea, um, this is what was going on, right? That's one page, which opens up events. They even had events at other locations. Okay, and this, this is happening all at the same time. So, you know, you have to decide what you want to do, but just a couple of different sports that they had. They had uh, baton twirling, Jedi fencing. They had, of course, uh, all sorts of different strongmen. So they had pro women strongmen. They had amateur men strongmen. They had the adaptive strongman, the Arnold Classic. They had a USAPL a powerlifting meet, which we got to kind of see a little bit of that as we were walking in between things. They had Olympic weightlifting. They had uh, dancing. They had uh, some sort of competition with not pole dancing like stripping but like the actual sport of, of pole dancing uh which i saw that on the news on breakfast it looked really freaking hard i could i could hold my they're like holding their whole body up with an arm I'm not this fat guy then they had martial arts they had wrestling they had running um yeah so getting to see you know world records being broken in Highland Games and then deadlifts and then Sunday they had a, I can't Steinborn squat I think is how you pronounce it 
with uh, Lissus. He did the Steinborn squat record. That was neat. Um, Glenn and I were kind of watching some of it because we were at the Adaptive Strongman, but it was on the big screen, so I could zoom in my camera and kind of see what was going on. Half of sent a weight over bar world record right after Spencer Tyler had done it the day before, so that record only lasted not even 24 hours, or maybe just 24 hours, right around there. Uh, the world record elephant bar, and then all the throwing that Spencer did, and it was just... It was a really awesome time. So I can fully recommend if you want to go watch people lift awesome stuff, go to the Arnold. It's a good time. And that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Go lift something heavy.